So before we get started, let me ask you what the rules are, because I want to be very sensitive to, you know, um, the whole idea around all the things you can do and whether you want people to know specifics. Like, am I allowed to ask you about that? Am I allowed to mention yeah. it? I got permission. So um, all I was shown was um, one through four, which uh, is uh, levels of enlightenment. It's just kind of a system of progression that okay. the Taoist use. Um, once you get past level four, that's when the real stuff starts to happen, you know, um, molecular control and whatnot. Um, but you know, maybe one in a million people get there in their lifetimes. Um, I'll be lucky to get to three, uh, hopefully. But, um, yeah, it, it's pretty much you have to ride a lightning bolt inside of your body <laughs> for 10 <laughs> seconds to actually merge these two energies. Uh, pretty crazy stuff. Okay. Let me ask you right from the start. Um why did you get involved with this stuff? In other words, first say what it is, just a brief rundown, very brief, and then tell me why you got involved with this, Chris. It's uh, called Nigong or Nidan. It's just um, internal energy work. Mm -hmm. um, I got interested because my buddy was backpacking through South America, said that he stayed at a dojo in the middle of the Andes Mountains and that this guy threw him without touching him. <laughs> and I was hooked. Uh, said that he could form orbs while he was doing Tai Chi movements, visible, blue, like he was holding lightning. Um, and I was hooked. I mean, who's not, a, who's not a Star Wars fan? I mean, yeah. talk about, you know, some other world stuff. Uh, so I delved into this, and apparently... America's way behind uh, the rest of the world as far as this is concerned. It's more widely accepted in the West. Um, and I also know that uh, it's really hard to find teachers because the real stuff is kept hidden. Because, and I could vouch for this, um, knowing how much effort I've put into the work, um, I'm not really interested in sharing. It's uh, it's a lot of dedication, and I mean, I think people are starting to come around. So, um, you know, hopefully this will help guide people towards uh, towards the path. Okay. Now, um, I guess how long have you been doing this for? And uh, maybe. Start off by telling me, too, what are some of the side effects? You've told some of these things to me and shown me some things, but for the benefit of people watching the video, you know, what are some of the side effects? Um, so the side effects of meditation is um, telekinetic abilities. Um, I mean, I was moving objects up to the first year. And I've been going strong at it for eight years now. Um, minimum of an hour a day in meditation. And um, just like this blind sight stuff, you may not think that it's working, but um, it is. I mean, it is. If you, <laughs> if you know how to do just very basic breathing techniques and follow certain hand positions, you start to learn it is all very magnetic. Everything is either positive or negative, and once you get the right combination, um, you start to realize that we're kind of like a battery, um, and we can build our charge. We can make our voltage go higher, um, and the whole point is, and this is going to sound way out there in left fields. But it's to harness the light of God while we're here on earth. Um, so I've gotten to see 
you know, my master teleport right before my eyes. Um, really hard stuff to grasp. Uh, completely okay. mind shattering. So okay. Now, Chris, I had the um, benefit of you doing a demonstration for me mm -hmm. uh, uh, over Skype. You actually held a light bulb in your hand and you lit it up, mm -hmm. and uh, I was impressed. It's a regular, you know, 110 volt light bulb that you'd screw into the ceiling. And you put some foil on your one finger and foil on another and just put one finger on the bottom of the light bulb receptacle and another on the outside and you made a completed path of electricity flow through the bulb and you lit it up. Right. Now, that was pretty impressive. And uh, am I allowed to share that or I have to keep that to myself? Sure. I got permission. So, um, I, you know, it took a little convincing, but I was like, you know, People are interested, you know, in this stuff, and I'm not going to lie. I didn't have pure, you know, it wasn't my goal to uh, speak to the, the Holy Spirit or, or God or come to know. I wanted some magic powers, <laughs> like, uh, but it became so much more afterwards. Um, yeah, I don't mind. Okay. So you don't mind any part of that video I can cut into this one? No problem? Sure. Yeah, okay. absolutely. That's great. And I was also impressed how you could move cans around on your desk. They would just kind of follow your hand or right. things like that. Now, there's, there's probably a lot more things you can do that you haven't even told me. Right. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, as far as the side effects go... Um, it's it's uh it, it's been kind of all over the board so um and i'll not even realize why i'm being called to to do these things until i just i just something's telling me to so you know burning holes through objects from across the room um using chi to you know light fires um the lights, you know, easy. Um, oh, my favorite thing is playing with the wind. That's, uh, I mean, the elements are at our disposal. Jesus was talking about how people could do these things. And I think dogma kind of twisted spirituality and religion. But, yeah, I mean, he was serious on the Sermon of the Mount saying, we can do these things and so much more. Um, oh. Well, talking to the dead has been, honestly, kind of the most profound experience. Um, just because I, sometimes they'll take me to their plane of existence. Um, it's just crazy. So I've gotten to talk to angels. I've talked to gods. This isn't for, um, it isn't for everybody, you know, talking about these things. If you have a set mind in religion, you're not going to want to question those things. But um, I'm curious and um, I've seen the darker parts of things. Um, I've seen beings from... Um, taken to, you know, after death towards the center of the universe and they're being pulled from all different planets and, and this universe is a huge place. We have no idea. Um, Chris, um, you know, anybody watching this would say, oh gosh, I don't want to get involved in any kind of lower spirits or negative things or the devil. You know, I only want to get involved with things that are of a benevolent nature, of a higher nature, what would your answer be to that? Because, you know, we always try to do good in this world, and most people, anyway, don't want to get involved with something that would be seen as lower or dark or evil. What's your answer to that? Can they get involved with this and, and keep themselves pure, keep themselves safe, keep themselves you know, believing that they're involved with something beneficial? Yeah, there, um, 
there was a documentary I just recently watched called, um, um, it's, uh, I think speaking with the light or, or, um, going to the light, it was with this, um, with this woman in Canada. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was videotaping, uh, aliens on a regular basis for decades. Um, multiple different cameras. You sent me an image that was, it looked exactly like her images. Okay. Um, so the minute she thought, um, that maybe these forces were not friendly, everything shifted in her reality and things started to happen in her home, like hauntings. Um, she let people around her get into her psyche and convince her that maybe they're not friendly. Um, so it's all intention. I mean, you can, I mean, what is our reality? I mean, what are we even seeing? We kind of create our own reality. So, um, if you have the intention of communicating with benevolent beings, you will get them. <laughs> hey, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it really is uh, your choice. Mm -hmm. What you want to do with this. And I mean, I know for myself, I would want to get involved in it in a positive way, in a benevolent way that's helpful and beneficial to me and others and, and nothing else. Right. You know? Can you tell me... Um, What's involved in your daily meditation, both what you're doing physically with your body and what you're doing mentally with your mind? Can you walk me through that, Chris? Sure. Um, so usually I'll begin meditations about um, an hour before I actually fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people say you have to do full lotus. A lot of people say you have to do. St I've never, uh, I've never dealt with um, the positions, and frankly, it doesn't really matter. Um, what matters is these little tricks and gimmicks that I'm about to share with you. They're just a way to quiet the brain. Mm -hmm. That's it. it. It's it's literally. The whole point is just to try to think of nothing, which is kind of hard. It, it is hard. It's really, <laughs> I mean, we're always thinking. And then if you're not, if you're thinking about not thinking, it, you know, you're still thinking. You're still thinking. So it's right. really letting go. So I've developed you know, little tricks to get past this. I'll try to listen to the source of sounds. Um, just tune into every single sound around me and if you start to listen hard enough you can trace it to where sound originates in your brain um, so that's my little trick for, <laughs> for getting the blank minds and then I do the microcosmic orbit um, with yin flowing down the front of my body and yang flowing up my spine and just letting this energy circulate and is that a visualization that you're doing when you say that is it no, a it's a physical feeling i mean um so no i'm not i'm not ever thinking about it but i know that energy naturally moves through our bodies like this all the time i mean your blood your in your in your vessels and veins it's um it has chi in it. If you can look at an acupuncture chart and see the natural flow of how the heart pumps blood throughout the body, you'll realize that you're actually, you can feel this, this energy, and you kind of awaken this dormant energy in your blood and the oxygen and, uh, and everything. Um, and then <laughs> the main trick um, that I got scolded for is, is placing the left hand over the right, over your belly button. So while you're circulating this energy, even if you're not feeling anything, 
and you're just breathing normally with your eyes closed, thinking of nothing, just deep breaths, trying to even um, focus on your heart and you can actually make it just stop your heartbeat. Well, I'm doing that, I don't know if I want to stop my heart. <laughs> it's, it's, it's strange. I mean, when you get deep enough into meditation, um, you kind of go into this um, a catatonic state mm-hmm. where you don't have to breathe, you don't have to do anything. Um, it just happens naturally. And it's so hard when you go into meditation thinking, well, I'm not doing it right. That held me back for years. Like, what if I'm doing something wrong? Like, is this, why am I not feeling? It, it works. I mean, even if you're not feeling anything, if you are in a mindless state, breathing, not thinking, that's meditation. That's meditation. Yeah. Yeah, I know what the blindfold seeing and uh, things like that, you know, remote viewing and all that. They say it's important to do meditation every day. Um, I watched a video from an expert, and he said it doesn't matter what the meditation is, just that you do it. You just do the meditation. Right. Yeah. You can pick your own style. That's right. You, you feel the same way? There's a million paths to the top of the mountain and only one view from the top. So a lot of people stop and that's the whole problem. Just because my meditations are about building up energy in the Dantian, which is at the center of your gravitational core in your body. That's what that is. Um, Doesn't mean that's the right way. A lot of um, Christians will bow and pray and reach enlightenment that way. I mean, you hear about priests that were able to levitate through their cathedrals, and um, it's just a lot of time and dedication. So, Chris, where would somebody, where and how would they get started? Like, do they read a book? Do they get a book out of the library or on the Internet? Do they hook up with somebody who's teaching this? Where would somebody start, like, right out of the gate? What should they do? That's a good question. Um, I got lucky to find my master, um, who then let me read his fifteen year, fifteen hundred year old text, which is what I follow. Um, doesn't mean it's correct, uh, but I know that seeing the things that he can do, I wanted to. You know, if I could be anywhere close to that, yeah, absolutely. Um, It's all very personal, too, though. I mean, I've developed little tiny tricks and techniques during meditation to help me get in faster, um, to gain the energy uh, as much as possible. Um, You can even take it in through your skin. Um, technique called skin breathing to where you're literally not inhaling any air through your lungs at all Um, but you're letting it come through your skin and I know it sounds you know that's impossible but um, it's not I mean it's kind of like seeing through through a blindfold how well I don't know <laughs> now, now, Chris, uh, you know you've been doing this for eight years, and you're telling me a little bit about it today. Have you ever thought of doing online classes? Or... No, because I. Um, so this is where it kind of got a little frustrating. To where I stopped sharing is I realized that all these self-proclaimed masters would form classes and charge students thousands of dollars to take their courses. And it was very surface level. I mean, that if, if they can't demonstrate to me, um, basic telekinesis, if they can't move something, if they can't levitate, if, you know, why would I, why would I bother? Um, so, 
And also, it takes a tremendous amount of time to grow in strength. Um, classes would take away from that. Life is already so busy. Mm -hmm. So, so um, you're leaving the teaching up to the masters or other people? From what I came to understand, if you're called to the path, then you'll find your, your master. He'll come to you. You're ready. It's not for everybody. It's, um, but uh, through this group that you and Wendy started, there has been a lot of like-minded people coming forward, interested. So I'm kind of torn. Like, I don't know whether to say, okay, well, I was kind of the same way when I started seeing these people do these incredible things um, and just kind of wanting superpowers. <laughs> but then I got serious about it, um, and the breakthroughs have been so much more than I've ever expected. Um, direct contact with the... It's definitely not um, a human. It's definitely not human thinking. It's waves of knowledge that would take years of study um, in an instant. That's the most gratifying, I think. So I guess what you're saying, if you were, if you felt you were called to do this, uh, to teach, then you'd find a way to do it. But until then, you're not, you're going to leave it. You're not going to, you're just going to continue to practice yourself. Right. I mean, so, <laughs> well, this is going to sound really crazy, but, um, I hope to one day be able to um, readily demonstrate to people this is what we can do and leap off a building and <laughs> fly. I mean, my master's master was able to. Um, but to limit myself now uh, and to teach people these very basics that can be kind of grabbed from anywhere. Um, autobiography of a yogi um, teaches a lot of basic techniques. Um, uh, Vedic yoga um, and Mantak Chia teaches a lot of the techniques that we utilize. I mean, he has a lot of books out. So, um, no, I, I wouldn't be interested until, you know, I, I can fly, so maybe we'll see. <laughs> I agree. Now, Chris, is there anything else you want to talk about tonight, whether it's about all your energy work, about your seeing blindfolded? Is there anything else you want to talk about that you can share that, you know, you're okay with me putting this video up, right? Yeah, absolutely. Is there um, anything else you want to talk about? I guess... Um, to anybody that ends up watching this and is interested, um, just know that your efforts will be rewarded. Um, there's some very minor techniques to use. The right hand over the left is huge. Um, right hand of God the Father is this is giving energy. Um, so positive. Yang, fire, placing that over your belly button, and the left hand being yin, negative, feminine, um, it forms a circuit. So that was huge. <laughs> and so you put your right hand over your belly button? Right. And where did your left hand go? Over your, over your right hand. So place it over top of your right hand? Yes. And that forms a circuit, and that's the basis for all of this? Yes. So while you're meditating, keep your hands like that. Um, at the ends, though, when you're done, um, just breathe three times normally with your hands placed over your belly button like that. And uh, it locks have you got a special way, or is it just any way over top of your belly button? Any way. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it locks that energy in forever. It's you yours. Breathe? Breathe slowly and deeply three times in and out? Just normal. Just normal breaths. Just, oh. you know, just like while we're talking and how you're breathing now is perfectly fine. Um, 
eventually it becomes so so regular so so part of you that you'll be doing it without even thinking about it it'll just become something that happens all day long and uh it's fun <laughs> it's fun let me ask you this you're going to allow me to cut in the video to this video is there anything you'd like to show people right now or leave it to the video that i'm going to cut in well since i've done very little um i mean i guess i can i can see what i have in store real quick okay let me try this because this uh i mean maybe if i bend the card it'll be there you go oh the foil wants to come to your <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> so the biggest objects, you know, tables and chairs so far, um, you know, the big wooden ones, but it's a big waste of energy. So. Okay, cool. I got a question for you. Oh, you had a light bulb the other day. Right. Do you have that light bulb? Um, no, I put it up, but I'm trying to find one that I just had. And you found one. That's great. Um, so let me see if there's a way to... Oh, here's a piece of wood on So describe what you're doing. I'm just putting, um, uh, I'm just forming the contact points. My skin is not metallic enough, so... <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, I can put, um, uh, light bulbs on, um, a grounded part of my desk. Um, and that's, will make it light, but I want to actually hold it in my hands and do it. Yeah. I was impressed when I saw you do it, you know, two or three weeks ago there. Okay, now can you show it up high that there's no funny stuff going on? Okay. Give me a second. Okay, and turn your hand around, Chris, to show there's no battery or anything behind there. Okay. Okay. Ugh. I know that you're really exhausted, but there's absolutely no battery of any kind. A battery wouldn't power that bulb anyway. No. But. That's a just tremendous a regular, energy. Right. It's just a regular light bulb. Okay. Very good. <sighs> All right. Hold on one second. I'm I feel just exhausted as you are watching that. Sorry. I, it it does drain, um, but I feel a charge coming on. So. And you're mentioning if you don't kind of bleed this charge off, it'll keep you up late at night. Whoa. Yeah, it'll it'll keep me um it'll keep me up. Which it, it's hard to sleep before trips anyways, but you're heading out somewhere tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to Texas for a few days. Oh man. So I can't get the foil to behave. Hold on. It keeps disappearing from you? Yeah. Well, now that I'm all charged up, it keeps on shooting off my hands just like that. <laughs> so, so oh my gosh, it's like trying to. Okay, how so, about, yeah. Put, ah, look at that. It just flew off Chris, my Chris, I got an idea. Put your one finger against the bottom so it doesn't fly off. Yeah, and then, oh, well, there you go. You don't even need it. Uh, you don't uh, even need it. Oil. Turn it all around everywhere so people can see there's nothing anywhere. And and show me the inside of your hand, Chris. Yeah, perfect. There you go. Excellent. Well, that's pretty impressive. Get off there. And yeah, I mean, that was a good idea for you just said to hold the bottom of it. 
Well, it doesn't even sound like you need foil. What if you do it with your bare fingers? Or you need one foil. You need one foil on it. I just it. need one foil. Uh, uh, it's sticking to your hands. <laughs> well, it's trying to dance and play now because... Settle down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, just one, I guess. Now, what's odd is that charge is on one hand. It's just circulating around your fingers. Yeah. Electricity. It's going from one finger yeah. to the bulb to the other. <sighs> yeah, be careful. I don't want the light bulb to blow up in your face. Oh, oh well, that would be kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well, listen, thanks for spending the time together here tonight. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, enjoy your trip. When you get back, we can get together over Skype and practice some more of the blindfold uh, seeing. Okay. That would be, that would be great. Um, this is a fluorescent bulb, so... That's a different bulb. Yeah, the other one is just a filament bulb. Yeah. So that's really impressive. Because, you know, you need usually need 110 volts, and I don't know what the amperage is. But if it's a 60-watt bulb and it's 120 volts, that's half an amp. So you've got roughly a half an amp going through your fingers of current if if it's at 120 volts. Well... I know that when I attach a voltmeter to um, my hands, um, I've burnt out six so far. I'm tired of buying them. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Um, you know, uh, Dean Radin is a member of the group. Right. Would you be into having him investigate you? He, he runs the uh, center called IONS. If he watches his video and inquires, would you be interested in going out um, to his institution and getting tested and for research purposes? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I did, uh, I gave it some thought and um, I don't want to, um, I guess if it guides people to this, then the more the better. Yeah, he's not. He's not. He's a, a truly a scientific guy that's not trying to prove something not legit. He's trying to prove that all these different things are legit. Uh oh. Which is which is really good and you know and if uh, right, the volume went out. You can hear me. Can you can hear? Me? I can hear you. Did you, did you blow your speaker? <laughs> I got uh, so much charge. It, uh, my speakers are grounded. And uh, so, uh, 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 I mean, it was pretty good size. You know, Spark jumped oh. at me. Oh, really? Yeah, and I got zapped a little bit, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was saying that that Dean is a scientific guy that is is interested in this to pro to to show that it is legitimate these kind of things. He's right. not um, like somebody that's trying to debunk and discredit somebody. And and um, also Chris, if you were to invite Wendy and I to come out, we'd be happy to uh, chaperone you or. You know, escort you out there to get tested. We'd love to be a part of it if you want it. That would if, be awesome. If you prefer to be private, that's also great. But we would love to be a part of it and to watch all the things that you're participating in with them. No, that would be fantastic. I would love to do that. Um, this piece of foil I just really wants to <laughs> come and come and play. Now, what happens if you ground your hand on a piece of metal? Does that take the charge away, or does that not do anything? Um, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. I mean, 
So, uh, can you hear um, very well with your speakers? Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, God. That. Can you show it on the screen? Is there any way to show that on the screen? Do you mind if I cheat and grab a metal object to, so I don't have to take the shock yeah, to the yeah, yeah, yeah. one point on my skin? Yeah. Oh, that would be way better. Oh, man. Ow. Um, yeah, let me see if I can turn this a little bit. Okay, it's shining at the light there, the metal light. Oh, that was silly. I, yep. just... I can see your face and I can see the light. I could have just moved the lamp, but okay. I just like doing things the hard way. Okay, I see the spark. Oh! Oh, you got Even though you got your hand on the neck, you're getting a jock. It blew out my speakers. Can you still hear me? I can hear you. Ooh. All right, I, I gotta stop. Okay, turn the light on. Hold on, let me see. Does the spark show up even when you got the light on, Chris? Huh? Does the spark show up to that light even if you got the light on, or you will? Yeah, it does. Um. Only because that way people can see that there wasn't anything funny happening when it was dark. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you've still got a charge in you, see if it'll shoot, you know, if it'll go to that light. Okay. Yeah. Let me um, just get this out of the way because it was blowing all sorts of stuff back here. Okay. Give it a five. Just fine now? Yep. Go a little higher so it's away from the lightness. Okay, yeah, up there somewhere. Ah, yep. Yeah. Wow. Can you see it? Yep, I can see it just fine. <coughs> and that's power that your body is producing. Where's your other hand? There's no electrical cord on your other hand of any kind, right? No, there's not. Uh, oh, it's a bottle of pop or a, a you know soda. Yeah. Uh, fantastic, Chris. Now, <laughs> I'm not. I mean, let me ask you this: Can you turn that light off without touching it? It's been a great chatting with you, and have a safe trip. Okay, hold on. I, I I'm feeling it. Hold okay. Up. Oh. oh man, hold on, almost there, hold on. There you go. Okay, now can oh, you cool. turn it back on? There you go. And, you know, show that there's no switch in your hand, of course. Your other hand. Oh, yeah. Nothing. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not attached to anything. There's no... Trickery. I mean, it is exhausting, but other than that, it's just energy. It's just yeah, energy. The cord for that light is plugged into that power bar right beside you, Chris. Um. No, it's um. Th this is uh. It, it's actually attached way up on okay. top of my desk behind us, so. Okay. Just, just because you know people are going to see this and they're going to claim all kinds of things, right? Right. You, know, you got to pack and you got to get ready for your trip tomorrow. So, thanks so much for the time. Have a safe trip, and uh, let's chat when you get back. Well, thanks so much, Rob. All right, Chris. Thanks and be safe on your trip. We'll talk to you soon. All right. See you, man. Bye -bye. He wanted you to um, show that you can turn a light bulb on. Okay. Ugh. 
Should I? Oh, I guess I should turn off these other lights real quick. Yeah, turn it down so we can at least still see a little bit. Actually, I think maybe I can, because um, I, I kind of charged up, so I think it wouldn't be anything for me to. Just give me a second. Probably turn the light off by yourself anyway. That's what I'm gonna try to do. <laughs> There you go. Let me see if I can get this big light. Ah, got it. Now, does that ruin the light or does it just put it out? Oh, it just it just puts it out. So like um It'll, I mean, it'll probably flicker from, oh, there it is. Ah, oh, okay, see, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of weird, but, um, you know, when I'm going for runs or, or anything, it's really fun to do with street lights. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, my uh, seeing partner who practiced with me, Wendy, I think she has this ability because she was walking in her street in Bayfield, Ontario, and then she walked by a house at night. All the lights started flashing like that. Oh, oh wow. Do you think that that was the same ability? Yeah. Um, so a lot of people are are born with a certain amount of energy. And a lot of people um, have the ability to commune with the dead. And if a spirit's trying to reach out to you, uh, lights will go crazy. Uh, stuff will start shutting off around certain people. So, uh, you know, you may ask Wendy if she's ever seen ghosts or oh, yeah. been able to talk to them. I think she has, yeah. Like, her husband passed uh, two or three years ago, and she kind of communicates with him. Uh -huh. She's had quite a bit of psychic ability all her life, Wendy has, oh. yeah. Yeah, that's great. It's... um. That ability is easy to teach. I actually just taught two people how to open that third eye, and I warned them, though, because once it's open, it's open. I mean, you can't – it's kind of annoying sometimes because it's like somebody poking you with a stick going like, hey, 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 I need to talk to them. And it's like, oh, my gosh. So it's a little much. So I just have aluminum – foil on my fingertips oh, yep. because I need to connect the leads. It kind of gives a better connection, does it? Yeah. I mean, sometimes I can do it with just straight up skin contact, but... I remember my dad stopped a tractor when he was a kid using his hands. Oh, really? He just put it... There you go. Wow. And show the camera so that there's no battery or anything behind it. Okay, so there's the light. Yeah. Thumb. Contact, yeah. <gasps> now, does that hurt, Chris? Oh, it, um, it drains. It drains me a lot. Um, it's kind of like if you're lifting weights, doing a bench press or something, it's kind of like you're at the final point where you just have to yeah, it's it's kind of exhausting. You gotta rest for a bit, right? Wow, and is that like a hundred and ten volt light? Oh, that wow. is a. Uh, I think I don't think it's LED. I think this one is just a halogen because it has oh. the leads. Is is that one you would plug into your like right into the house? Just into a lamp, yeah. A lamp or a living room light. Here, let me angle this down a little bit. Have you ever connected yourself to a voltmeter to see what the voltage is? Yeah, I actually broke my voltmeter um, because I was I was trying to see how high I could get it, and it's weird because <clears throat> it'll read out a constant um, voltage on DC setting, but I turn it to AC, 
and did what I just did to the light. And the thing just read air, and then the whole screen went black, and that was the end of that voltmeter. So, yeah. I would expect that your voltage is DC voltage, direct current. I would expect. Yeah, uh, I, I think so too. It's kind of weird because you time it with the in breaths and the out breaths, and it changes the direction of the voltage. So, um, let me see. Well, look at that. Yeah. I can see it. Is there any danger that you could have it blow up in your face? Uh, I haven't had that happen yet. Okay, I mean, I wouldn't want to have any accidents that would be harmful of any kind, right? Right. Let me see. That looks like an LED bulb. Yeah. Oh, here's the, this is the neon that I was going to show you. Let me get these out of the way. This is just an attachment to one of those, um, I don't know, like, yeah, it's just neon. Okay. I don't know if that's even picking up. I can see it when you touch. It just lights up like a yellowy color. Yeah, I can see it. Yep. I, I can see it on the teeth of what looks like a comb. Yeah, there we go. Uh, oh, there we go. Duh. Yep. Very good. Does that, does that hurt or it just drains? Oh, it's, it just drains. It, um, it takes a lot of, like, I think metabolism or ATP. Um, so a lot of cellular energy is required. Yep. So it, feel, it, it, it feels like like um, you're lifting weights. It, it honestly does. And after a while, it's just like you can't go anymore. I have to recoup. Sometimes whenever I'm supercharged, like right now, it'll um, – like I can hear the shocks, which I'm hearing now. So wow. Ugh, Man. Let me ask you this, Chris. Is your wife kind of nervous about all this power in your body? Um, she was at first, but um, it really comes in handy for healing. So if she has like a, um, a muscle ache or, or a bone spur or, or any kind of strain, um, as long as the person's relaxed, I can send electricity through them, and uh, uh, sometimes it's pretty violent. You know, you'll you'll see uh, her, you know, shake like being shocked or electrocuted. Um, but it's just trying to clear up blockages. Um, I got a question for you. Sure. I had a treatment. I had a very large varicose vein in my left leg, and they did the treatment where they um, I forget what the name of it was, but they basically kill the vein they had to heat it up and when they did that there's always the risk that there's nerves that go down to your feet that are wrapped around the vein yeah and he told me there was a risk that i could have permanent numbness in some of my nerves oh wow and, and unfortunately you know down my leg and down through the back of my heel over the front of the foot down to the toes is all numb oh my gosh and uh, two nights ago, was it last night? Maybe it was even last night. I was closing the gate at the farm and I dragged the gate behind me as I closed it and it caught my foot and I didn't feel it. Oh. The, the nerve was dead, right? Oh my and, God. and so it gouged in and I didn't, it didn't even hurt. And I thought, oh, I wasn't happy. And I thought, I'll bet you when I take my sock off, it's not going to look pretty. I took my sock off. Sure enough, it had been gouged out. It was bleeding, right? Oh, man. And I was, you know, I was really upset that this, I have this nerve damage because of this treatment. But it's like the treatment also um, reduced your risk of a heart attack by something like 10% or 20%. Right. It's getting rid of that very bad varicose vein in the leg, right? So it's kind of like weighing out the balance, right? Right. And so I accept that, okay, I have that, that I have that numbness, but, you know, I knew sooner or later I'd have a little accident like this 
because I couldn't feel anything. Would that energy be able to heal that? Well, yeah, that's what um, it's. Well, the primary purpose is for me. Uh oh. Uh oh, oh, there, there we go. go. Okay. Um, the primary purpose of this energy is to um, is to connect with the higher source. And so I guess the main side effect has been um, an inflow of knowledge that I never had. And so I've started building things. Um, but healing is actually, it's actually one of the most revered arts. But I mean, um, my master healed somebody of stage four cancer and he did it with eight different people. So they were on their deathbed in the hospital and they had a medical miracle after you visited them. I mean, it's all just your mind is such a powerful tool. Um, if you're able to just know that you'll be okay, <laughs> it's a difference between thinking and knowing. <clears throat> then you could you could heal yourself of anything, and it really doesn't require a whole lot of training to do that. It's just, I mean, I think that. I mean, the stuff that I've seen him do, um, he threw me across the room w without touching me. So, um, it, who knows what we're capable of, you know? And it but, should uh, always be used for good purposes, right? Always for good purposes. So, there's a technique called sword fingers. If you just keep your fingers like this, and point at the spot that's hurting and just kind of um, go one direction, like you're smoothing it out, like there's a beam of energy going through it. Um, if you do that uh, nine or ten times, it, it'll it'll feel better. Okay. Uh, yeah, just, just feel the energy coming from your fingers, and you'll feel it while you're doing it. It'll almost be like you're brushing your own skin, but you can hold it six inches out. And feel it just fine. I'll give that a try. Um, I guess I was gonna burn off so uh, this extra energy. So if I um, get permission, then um, you can show whoever. <clears throat> yes, I have too many coins here. Okay. Nice. Do you have to hold your breath when you do that, Chris? I just have to flex. Uh, you know, because um, you can direct this energy to any point in your body. So I breathe it in from my stomach and then yeah. out just a little bit to my hands. And then I hold my breath once I get it there. That's impressive. Oh. That's pretty cool. <laughs> charged up tonight yeah and what well, happens if you don't burn off the energy um it will well i stay up <laughs> i can't well, sleep and that would probably be the case yeah 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 it's so oh good but when you do your workouts with the weights that will also help to burn it off yeah. So thank you very much, and I, I thank you on behalf of my son, Mark, because he was really excited to see you light up the light bulb, and he's he's staying up. He wants to see it tonight, so have a fantastic evening, Chris. All right. Thanks, Rob.